everyone's your boy JP bringing you the 85th episode of our uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of Duels Let's Play. So, last episode when we clicked back onto the game, we did in fact complete the 5D's era of the game. We defeated this guy, we had victory instead of doom. Yo, I don't understand this guy, I talked about last episode, what with his shoulders, how it was he not disqualified out of the door, because if you didn't know if you randomly skipped to this episode, I'm just saying there was a big dual championship and there was a teams of three and we defeated two of the people, spoiler alert, ha, huh, whoa, never would have guessed. And then the other two people fused with the last member and it's like how the fuck does this, <laughs> whatever. So we have a tradition with this series, whenever we complete one of these quote unquote series, by the way, if you're wondering, again, if you're new to the series of reverse duels, that's why it isn't on 100%. I'll be doing those off screen. I don't, uh, I'm don't. i not going to be doing it on screen because it's just a waste of time at this point. But we have a tradition every time I finish one of these, we're going to be doing a pack opening for that specific error. So, let's do it. But the only thing about it is, I'm going to be specifically setting 20 minutes instead of just doing like 100,000. Because what I'm thinking is. I want to save all the money and just do 20 minute episodes as if I usually would and go all, go through all of these and then once we finish all of them that's when I'll just sit there and I'll just use all of my cash whether it be an hour long video whether it be like a 3 hour long video it's going to waste all of the money on that one episode so anyway let's get into this let's go to the card shop let's hopefully get a few of them and timer will start in a few seconds I'm just gonna wait for it to hit two minutes in the recording so uh five four three two one let's go okay what up trudge so right now <laughs> to be honest to be honest I can't speak I'm recording this directly after the last episode I'm still sick I still have a huge fucking headache but I don't really have any topics to talk about to be honest I've really spoken about most of the things that come to mind today but I'm just going to as we're opening pack openings go over one thing that we went over the other episode because I really don't understand it so about two episodes ago I was talking about this and yeah so I apologize if you already heard it but I let me just get into it dude for those people who haven't sorry if you have so I do not understand why people on YouTube Put in huge titles, do not buy this Yu-Gi-Oh! pack. Because, in theory, isn't that just fucking up the game? Because if you're influencing people to not buy card packs, and then they're just gonna make, they're just not gonna release anything new, dude. It's, it's quite simple logic. You're practically ruining the game if you stop buying, it's like, Put it this way, many YouTubers, if a series doesn't get views, then they're gonna stop it. Logic. If a series, like say someone, there's a YouTuber who gets, say, a thousand views on a series, and like a bunch of other t YouTubers like, do not watch this series, and then give a bunch of reasons why, I could be like, yo, I don't think I wanna watch this anymore, dude. That's fucked. And then it's gonna drop in views, and then the YouTuber may stop uploading. Same thing with Konami. People will tell people not to buy packs, they influence people not to buy packs, and then they're not going to bring out any new products because of, they're not going to make any money off of it. They're not going to just release a bunch of stuff they don't make money. And that's bad because old archetypes need new support. I love seeing old archetypes uh, get new support. I love seeing new cards, I love seeing new card arcs, and we just need new cards for the game to progress. So I don't understand. Now, little two minute rant over. So again, for the people who have already heard me talk about it, I just I genuinely don't understand. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. They're not really doing it for the money or some shit, dude. But I uh, no hate to you if you do it. <laughs> and though it may sound harsh, I just I already gave my points to why I don't think it's a good idea. I mean, if you're giving reasons like overall, being like yay, positives, negatives, and then giving overall thoughts with the fact, like do not buy, bad. So anyway, uh, let's get back on this, and we still have so much money to do, the, the final pack opening is going to take so long, I am just saying, okay, that's crazy, we're on 85, 
15 episodes away from 100. Pals, who Mecha Dragon, dear, what up? Ah, oh, jeez. Kinda wanna do a special for episode 100, but... <laughs> I don't really see a point, unless episode 100 is an actual... something special. There isn't really much of a point, because it's a Let's Play, dude. Hour-long special wouldn't really work with this series, because of... Out of Vavil Chain? Because, like, how we do it, we split it up in segments. I've also noticed a lot of YouTubers who let's play this game, they tend to just record and not do it in separate segments. So, you see some people where they have, like, say, 30 episodes, and then there's me with over 100. It's like, whoop. <laughs> Sorry, I just like making things organized. And that's why my thumbnails are how they are, so if someone wants to see a certain duel between certain characters, I'd be like, yo, I'm just gonna watch that episode. So yeah. I've also noticed I have the most unique thumbnail when it comes to Legacy of the Duelist. Most people just put in, say, that one picture with all the uh, main characters, excluding Yusaku. Of course, because this game wasn't uh, made you know, Yusaki wasn't around when this game was made, so yeah. So it's kind of crazy. Because, like, as I said, we do that. So most of them look the same. And the ones that are different, they're on the pretty much the same theme. Then this mine is so different. It's like, dude, I love it. <laughs> I love being hipster. God, that maybe sounds so weird, but I don't know, dude. I just love being unique. And uh, doing things my own way. So, yeah. The one thing on the thumbnail is I probably should have done it, so instead of having Jaden on the front, I swapped him up, so with the first error, I put in Yugi, then the second, Jaden, third, Yusei, etc. But then I have to find a good picture that's transparent or do it myself, and at the same time it's like, eh, I like Jaden, dude. He can be the front, and it's literally me, so, a hey. Fun fact, if you did not know, my name is Jaden, so, uh, yeah. Hey, Lavovo. Lavovo's a fucking cool dude. I, I'm just saying, if you like a nice spammy deck, play Lavovo. Uh, they are super old, never gonna support in a long time. So, they're not the greatest, but if you're playing against an AI or you just want to bring out Shooting Quasar Dragon, Red Nova Dragon, they're fucking great, dude. Rekindling with that deck, great. Uh, Gen X, what up? So, yeah. Also, I'm kind of interested in you watch YouTube 2008 because of I haven't really been uh, recording that as of late. I know I should be and getting it prepared for when this series finishes, but I've just been getting into so many other games and recording them, so it's kind of been delayed. But I'm interested in how long that's going to take. I seriously hope it's not going to take another hundred episodes, dude. <laughs> I want to wrap it up before the year ends. By the way, I know I've spoken about it numerous times, but at the end of the year, I am in fact going to be doing a channel revamp, so I want to finish up all my Let's Plays before then. At the same time, I'm not someone to quit on something, so I'm just going to abandon the series. I am definitely going to be finishing it, and I just got to grind it. I got to push it out until uh, before the year ends. So, yeah, it's going to be a lot of work. So many series I need to finish up, dude. And my bad internet and bad computer don't help, dude. I I spoke about it so many times, dude. The Volvos are so fucking cool. See, look at this guy. But my internet's trash, dude. Say so I would, I started uploading a video at 10 p.m. last night, and I left it on all day. And the whole time I was at school, I got back at like four, uh, or like you know it was like three something. I'm just gonna say four, because that's when I checked it. And it's only like 40% done, dude. It's like, are you serious? Jeez, it takes so long to upload videos. It's annoying. My internet's so bad. It definitely doesn't help being a, a YouTuber and trying to upload consistent videos and uh, trying to push out a bunch. Got four series going on, plus all the random videos. So, yeah, kind of crazy. Tell me in the comments down below if you have bad internet, what is your download speed. In fact, what is the worst download speed you've ever had? With me, my average download speed is 200 to 300 KBS, but it's usually 200 and 
Actually, I'm just gonna say 100 to 300 because it's always it always varies. But yeah, and but the lowest I've ever had, no joke, bites. It's been that slow. I don't fucking know why. Was it cutting out? God knows. It's literally in bites. I was getting like 10 bites or something. I was like, what the fuck? I've seen it go to one bite before, but that's probably because of an issue. But other than that, like <laughs> 10 kbs, dude. <laughs> Yeah, it's insane. Cannot wait for new internet. Yo, what a mecca. And the money is still going down so slow. Jurassic Dino. Dragoonity. So many people obsessed over Dragoonity for the longest of times. Honestly, I never really played them. There are so many decks that I've played before, and so many I've messed around with, but Dragoonity just never interested me to mess with them, to be honest. I mean, I did watch YouTubers play them, and they seemed alright, but like, there's more so for what they can do, rather than the cards themselves. The cards themselves are like, eh, to me. Alright. So, I know I bring this up so many times, but in the comments below, also, what are your top three archetypes? Me? Everyone should know this by now. <laughs> Everyone should. Heroes, Mass Heroes, aka Elemental Heroes, Cyber Dragons, and DDDs. Those are great. I do like plenty of other archetypes. If you ask me for my top 10, I could definitely give you that. But those are my top three. The three I'll always continue to work on, the three I'll always get the new product of, and the three I really care about. But the other ones, like there are a lot I really like, so like Red Eyes, Burning Abyss, etc. But if you get new support, like, yo, that's fucking cool. Instead of like, if a Cyber Dragon, you're like, holy fuck, Cyber Dragon support! And the Burning Abyss and all that stuff are more something I play when I'm like feeling like something different, you know? While I uh, say Cyber Dragons, it's just something I can always just sit down and play. So I, uh, yeah, hard to explain. But, hey, it's just like, if I feel like something different, there's other decks I can play. So, yeah. Twin Magician, I remember I used to see so many fake variants of that card. Especially when I was a kid. Senate switch. Trishula. Ah, it's kinda crazy. How many cards have been getting erratas? Well not recent, but throughout the year they have been. And to be honest, I don't like erratas. This could be a whole topic of its own, but I just see a point in it, dude. Because of if you make a card, leave it. Just leave it. If it gets banned, Leave it. At least it can keep its effect. You can play some format, I don't know, where you use bank cards. Just leave it how it is, because that's how the card is. If you want to get something similar but slightly nerf, make a whole new card, dude. Because it erratas. They're changing an old card. I hate it. I, dude. It's just so annoying. It's so bad because, like, so you could be in love, say, Flame Wingman, everyone loves his effect, it's great, and it's like, it's too have a power to do half, and it's like, well, you could be like, it used to be a really cool card, now it's just mediocre, and it's just like, eh. And if a card's overpowered and it's banned, you could be like, yo, that card's so good, but if it gets nerfed, it's like, eh. It kind of ruins the card for you. And even if a nerf isn't that bad, or even if it's a buff, <sighs> dude, fuck riders, dude. It's a card game, it's not Pokemon, you can't just change the stats, you can't just do that stuff. It's a card game. You change an effect, and it's just, it ruins the card. You may as well make a completely new card, dude. Turret Warrior, United We Stand. Cards used to be so cool. Dude, Turret Warrior, you could get so many combos off with him. <laughs> I remember I used to do that in Prime Squad, Battle People. And then I'd summon Junk Warrior, and then I'd just use Torret Warrior over him. And then just a huge beat stick right there. Ancient Pixie Dragon. Actually, I'm pretty sure I spoke of this before, but I actually have all the tins of all the different 5 of these dragons. And I remember the Ancient Fairy Dragon one. I got one day, I was out. This is back when I was a, uh, like really young, and I was just game I wanted. I think it was like a bed 10 game. I was like, yo, I want this so bad. And then there was an ancient fairy dragon tin. And I was like, you know what? You know what? You know what? 
Fuck this dude. I want the tin. Or something like that. I can't remember properly, but yeah, I was like, yo, you gear overway, everything else can step aside. I want this. And uh, I'm pretty sure my first ever Yu Gi Oh tin was Stardust Dragon. My second one was Red Dragon Archfiend. I'm pretty sure. I don't think I ever had any before that. Hmm. What was your first ever tin? Yeah, I kind of tend to just walk over and check, but I'm almost 100% sure Stardust was the first one I ever got, dude. Because, like... I mean, I know I did get some before that, but it was with fake ones, with fake cards in it. That's probably what's bothering me, because like, I feel like I'm wrong. That's that's probably what I'm thinking of, because it's, it's my first real Yu-Gi-Oh tin. Yeah. But who knows, maybe when I was a super duper young kid, someone got me one and then I, then they threw out the tin because like, ill waste of uh, space. Nah, I don't, I don't, that didn't happen. But, also, what was your first ever structure deck? Or just a deck like that in general, where you just buy the set deck? For me, it, dude, it's kind of crazy. But I don't even remember getting this dude. But it was, I fuck, I can't even remember the name. But it's one with the uh, red eyes, darkness metal dragon. It was like the first one that came out, or something like that. It was like years ago. I I still got like I could just go and check because I still got over like rule books and play mats and shit. Dude, I don't know why, but when it comes to my childhood, I remember the most random shit. But I don't remember the full details of many things, and there's many things I can't remember. Like, I can remember so many random things, but... <sighs> I can't remember just some small stuff, as I said. I know I got that deck, and I know where I got it. I just don't remember getting it, you know? And I also remember there was this random shop in the middle of some... Uh, I don't know what you used to call it, like, a, a mall? Plaza? Fuck knows, dude. And there's this one random shop, it was like a reject shop or something. And they just had one of those little, uh, I, I don't know what you'd call it, but it's like a little box. But it was one of those long ones, and it was just, a, like, it had enough room to just fit a card in the middle of it. It was just a bunch of those cards stacked on top of, on top of each other, laying down across the box. And it, you could get, like, one of them for a dollar. I remember like, that's where I got my first guy to feel this night. I was like, yo, I wanna get that card. And I'm pretty sure I, I can't remember what other cards I got there, but I know I got Gaia. I remember that in my area there was this uh, market. I mean there's a few markets, but there's this one in particular that I loved. It was like so unique and so great. Sadly they changed it now, but there's so many Yu-Gi-Oh! shops there, dude. And <laughs> I remember people use there was this one dude. He was like, he was his own little market thing, and he tried to rip people off. He was selling real products, but he like sold so many things, like he'd sell like any TCG, any like, he'd sell like Bakugan, Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh, and he wouldn't go things by the, do things by the actual price, he'd just do it by how commonly people want it. Say the Egyptian God cards, you like $10 each, sometimes more, 20 Blue Eyes was like, heaps of money too. So if it's a common card, it will cost a lot, but... Otherwise, it was just like a bunch of dollar cards. And then I remember in an area nearby there was a card shop where it was like professional people and they hosted tournaments and stuff. And they were like, "Yeah, that guy's like," I mean, I'm pretty sure they said once like, uh, he was like overpricing cards because of. I remember that's where I got my first flame wingman, dude. I paid like twenty dollars for it because that's back like I, it was like a rare. Uh, I think it was like a super rare, ultra rare maybe. And that's when it was like. Meta, and they were like telling me how, because I remember I was asking about the prices and stuff, because that's still when I, I was super young, dude. I was like ten, or something, and yeah, I was just uh, asking, and dude, I miss that place. I, <sighs> man, the only places where I ever see people sell cards, and do now. Uh, in like a plaza slash mall, whatever you want to call it. 
and it sucks because there used to be so many random areas and so many markets and they'd sell that stuff. It was fucking amazing, dude. I miss how popular the game was. And I miss my childhood, dude. Like, primary school, everyone used to love the game. I've already told stories about this. I remember uh, talking to the principal about setting up a tournament. He's like, yeah, dude, that's a great idea. Like, he was like telling me how conf like how he admired how passionate I was and all this shit and how no one's ever like spoken to him about something like that. And I went in front of an assembly and spoke to in front of the whole school. I was like, yo, I gotta be doing a tour of it. It was fucking awesome, dude. And I remember so many people coming and then they'd all be like, yo, can you teach me how to play? And then people knew how to play with this all like sit around and duel each other and ask to duel me. <laughs> it was crazy. And I remember this one guy, he'd like constantly try to duel me. And I already exp I remember that Toby story before. And I was, pl I was playing Cyber Dragons. And I just like one KO'd him, dude. I had power bonded. Limiter removed him with some shit like that. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> I say first turn, but it was my first turn. Of course, the second turn, because that's only when you can attack. I remember, dude. Back when you'd pull your cards in plastic bags and pull rubber bands around them to keep them together and carry them around in your pockets without sleeves. Ah, dude. I feel bad looking at my old cards and seeing them slightly damaged and worn out. Like, mind you, I always used to take a lot of care of my cards. Like, I remember I'd get home and I'd count my cards. I'd make sure they're all there. I'd make sure they're all there in the morning before I took them to school. And I'd always make sure they're in my pocket. I'd always make sure they're sealed up so none can fall out. I remember after every duel, I'd count my cards to make sure no one stole any or nothing happened to any of them. And I remember I had a bunch of tins and I'd store cards in tins and I'd had a uh, legend... Uh, wait, legendary collection folder and I'd put the good cards in there. Ah, it was crazy, dude. Back in the old days of Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> I obsessed over that game so much when I was young. And I know that 20 minutes is up, but... Dude, talking about this is awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I used to treasure my cards as if they were like my prized possessions. I remember I hated trading too, and eventually I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'll try trading. And then I ended up getting some pretty cool cards. I remember that's how I got my first obelisk. I traded one of my friends, and I was like, you know what, if someone's going to take uh, care of it, I want you to have it. And then he just traded me obelisk, and I was like, fuck, dude. <laughs> I've got obelisk. Because I remember that's when it first came out. And Ra too, because of it was in one of those packs, like one special edition pack, where it was like it's either him or Effect Veiler or something. And I remember seeing this kid who had a Ghost Rare Stardust Dragon. And it's like, holy fuck, I want that, dude. <laughs> but yeah, dude, I used to be way overprotective and way precious with my cards. I wouldn't let anything bad happen to him. I took so much care of him. So in the comments below, what were you like when you were a kid with your cards? As I said, I was always careful with them, always made sure I wasn't missing any, always took care of them. Though taking care of them didn't mean I always took care of them the best of way, as I said. I used to put them in little plastic bags to make sure they wouldn't fall out. And I used to put rubber bands around them or hair ties if I didn't have a fucking plastic bag. I remember stealing hair ties just so I can keep my cards together. <laughs> Man, it's crazy. But anyway, I think this is going to be it for this episode. We ended up pulling some pretty alright cards. We got Trish, Trish. We got some of the Cyanide Dragons. We got some of the Volvos. But hey, it's pretty cool. So, next episode, we're going to be taking on the Zexal Era. And by the way, I'm just saying, I haven't watched the Zexal anime. I've seen it on TV, I've skipped through it, I've seen important episodes, because like, I was like, I, you know, I research about stuff, but I haven't actually sat down and watched it. I haven't even finished watching the end of 5Ds yet, dude. Like, it's funny, I've seen these three series so many times, so many times, and I really explained about. I started watching 5Ds sometime last year, 
and I still haven't even finished it yet. And of course, re-watching before people are like, whoa, you haven't watched it before. But I haven't properly watched this. I watched this in sub when it's coming out, but I haven't watched the whole thing. And now I'm watching completely through frames. But I'm trying to wait for, I'm waiting for this, uh, this to come out in English because I want to watch it in English <coughs> fully. And I'm just saying, I can rewatch Yu-Gi-Oh! and GX so many times, dude. I'm someone who doesn't like rewatching. Remember, like, every year, I watch through at least uh, a part of the series at least once. Especially the original. When I was a kid, I used to watch it so much. I had DVDs, and that's all I would play, dude. I remember I watched bon uh, Bonds, no, Bonds Beyond Time, Pyramid of Light, whenever it was like a party, I just sit and, like... And like people were out getting drunk, and I was just in my room watching Bonds Beyond. Uh, fuck, Primitive Light. It was crazy. Anyway, yeah. Um, Rewatching all these series are pretty cool, but I still gotta watch this exo. So yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap up this episode here. Hope you have enjoyed. I'll catch you guys next time when we start off this exo. Peace. Let me get a pop when the beat goes.